Hello, everyone. Can I get another? Can we get another applause very quickly? I'm an elected official, so uh, the applause keeps us alive. It's like a, a gas meter. So the more you applause, the more lively I get. Just know that. Because um, a lot of people applaud for no reason at all, just because we're elected. Um, and sometimes it doesn't warrant it. So we have a slide here that I'm going to wait uh, to a little later on in the program to, to start presenting. But I wanted to talk about collaboration. That's what I'm here for. And civic engagement and how that works. Uh, we just had the same domino. Colin was there. He did a great job. And really uh, speaking to allowing for communities to be part of a process and deciding what their community looks like. Um, that should be a very basic right that any community has, but it ab absolutely does not exist. Um, at this point, there's a few progressives, or there's a lot of us now, a few progressives in the city council that are trying to change the way communities engage in uh, activities that we see are extremely important towards the development of a inclusive and empowered community. So collaboration. The way I want to start is speaking to something I call community patents. Everybody knows what a patent is. It's like you get an idea, you put it somewhere, and no one can take it from you, right? Um, unless, unless you buy it, right? Money can take it away. Uh, but every single community has its patents. Uh, they're not real. They're, they're thoughts, their ideas, uh, their organizations, and other things that already exist. And anything that anyone can possibly think of when it comes to injustices or needs of a community or trying to help a community, that community there has probably already thought about it. Or that community has probably already put forth the infrastructure to start, to start dealing with it. So when we talk about collaboration is when people come into a community that they respect that the community patents exist. And when you want to invent something or you want to do something new, you go online, you go through patents, you go do all your research, and like, I got this great idea, I'm going to make billions of dollars, I'm going to sell out and make sure that I, you know, I get the money up front, Right? You start it up and then give it away and let somebody else deal with it. You go through a process to try to figure out if you were the one that thought about that idea. But that doesn't happen in communities. In communities, the community patents are not respected. Right? What happens is people come into a community and they don't like something or they see something is wrong and they start getting the ball rolling. It's like, for example, we have trash is a huge issue in North Brooklyn. We 40% of the city's trash is handled by one community board. One community board out of 51, 40% of the city's trash. 70% of the city's trash is handled by three community boards combined out of 51, right? So that's an issue in this community. So what we have is an organization that's come through in the last couple of years that is starting to fight that issue. And we we're grateful that that organization is there dealing with this issue that's extremely important to this community and that we have to deal with. We got three times the asthma rates in the, as the city of New York, three times higher asthma rates than the rest of the city of New York. We're getting three times the amount of people going into Woodhall Hospital for asthma because of this. The truck traffic is, is, is extremely dangerous. Uh, it is more dangerous to be a sanitation worker than it is to be a police officer. It's another issue here. Or to do private carding. So these issues are important. So this group comes up. They help us out. They're out there. They're making a lot of noise. But what ends up happening? There's an organization that has been doing the exact same work for the last 40 years. And that organization was built from the community. They're community residents that have been there for 40 years fighting this fight. They feel left out of the process. The first group comes to the community group and says, we want you to join us. It's like we fell apart right there. It's already a problem that we're having when it comes to collaboration. Point is, largely, community patents exist before anyone comes into any community to affect change in a positive way, which is, which is important. That we do our research. We make sure that the community, that we look to community groups to start building and that we grow from there. And in doing so, we can start building a bridge. And this bridge is the most important thing. Right now, a lot of communities are guarded over what it means to let new people in and what it means to let new people in. Does it mean that you lose or does it mean integration? Another example is a bodega. A lot of folks, we had bodegas all over Williamsburg, all over Bushwick, and now they're changing. They're not bodegas anymore. There's something else. They have organic eggs, which are extremely important. We need our organic eggs. I love organic eggs, by the way. Um, but I had a friend that lived in Williamsburg that said, Antonio, I wanted my own organic market that I can go to all the time. And I fought for that, and eventually I got it. And then that person got displaced, and is now in Bushwick. He said, the thing that changed in Bushwick is I went to the bodega and told them if he could get organic eggs. That's all, he, all she did. 
she changed it that way. She started integrating. She says, I don't need a new store. I just need the same store to accommodate my needs. And the bodega owner said, absolutely, organic eggs all day. Now I sell organic eggs. And that little thing, that integration means a lot to people. It's like no one's trying to take over. No one's trying to assume that position. And I don't think there's any malintention or anyone is actively trying to do that. It's just this community patent idea that people don't know exists. But anything that you can think of or anything that you want has probably already been done in a community that's probably been fighting a lot of these issues that you're trying to address already. Then we get to the collaborative portion of it. This community does, was politically disenfranchised for a long time. The powers of Vito Lopez is a, an example. The, the county boss, old school boss politics here in Williamsburg is where he represented. He was here doing that work when it came to the politics of it. The people looked to him to assist them in affordable housing, looked to him to assist them in parks, in health, in every single issue that you could imagine, they looked to him. The problem is that the people didn't know that he was supposed to be looking to them. A bottom-up approach, that they have all the power and that they can ask for something and that he should deliver as an agent of the people. But that mentality wasn't there. So then I come in and I introduce something called participatory budgeting. Right? Blows, blows their mind. My people are like, you're going to give us an opportunity to say what happens with a million dollars in capital funds. And I say, yes, I'm going to let you do it. And they're like, why are you, why are you doing that? I'm, they're concerned about me opening up the process that is foreign to them. This is something they've never seen because it's completely new. But I'm using it in a way to build a common denominator. This is the one way that I can allow for my community to start opening up and understanding what their role in civic engagement and civic life is. Not that traditional stuff of just asking me to do everything for you. Do it for yourself. I say that what I can do is get to a place as an elected official that my people can vote me out. That they're that empowered that they understand and they could vote me out. An incumbent getting voted out. That would be the culmination of my success as an elected official. Right? I'm telling you, if my other people are scared, if my people are that powerful, that means that the next person is going to be held accountable, the next person is going to be held accountable, and they're going to get whatever they need and what's their, what they deserve, what's their right. So that's my goal. So this is a start to that. So this is participatory budgeting. I'm going to go through the sides blindly, just like you. It's freestyling. This is my district. It's amazing. It's, it's like a Pac-Man with a big back. Um, it's, so this... The, 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 the guy, so he said that I might be the last Latino elected official in this district. Absolutely true. The Voting Rights Act kind of made it so that these lines are no longer relevant in the next, in the next uh, drawing, uh, gerrymandering is what I'm going to call it, by the state. It's the state that does it, those damn state people. Um, so what you see is that I lost all of the waterfront that I used to have. This district used to have waterfront proper part, portion of it, but it's mostly white now. So I ended up getting more Ridgewood. Ridgewood is the largest growing Latino population in this part of the district. Not Williamsburg and not even Bushwick. And I have the, this L shape in Bushwick right here, Northwest Bushwick, and I call it South Central. Everything South Central up to Cornelia, I represent it as well, and north of Broadway. And in the middle area is also gerrymandering. An elected official really knew that that was a, a strong core of his, so he took it. So now we have this weird shape that makes no sense. The thing is, when the next lines get drawn, they could take the south side away from, from this district. They could add more to Bushwick. They could move it around any way they want. And what happened is no longer a majority minority district, which is what it was under the, votes, the, writing votes, the Voting Rights Act. This is participation, a process by which I have no role. My role is I committed a million dollars, make sure I give the million dollars. After that, the community completely controls the process by which they're going to determine how to spend a million dollars. So this is examples. This, you see my role right there holding up a sign? That's my role now. And I love that role. That's the, my favorite one. And people telling me what they want and putting priorities to it. And this is an example of several sites where we have participation. These folks have never done this before. And we're, we have over 800 people at a session, for example. They've never done this before. Extremely excited. These are all the projects that are being done. Everywhere that's gray, dark gray, those are council members that are not participating in participatory budgeting. So take note. This has been for four years. There's no reason any council member doesn't do this. Start, engaging your, start allowing your community to engage in these processes. So this is an example of what we're trying to do with technology as well. Make sure that people can get integrated. And then this is how year one happens. What's the need, the impact, and the feasibility? 
Somebody asked for a roller coaster on top of a school. It's not feasible. <laughs> but, but within themselves, they get to a point and understand that that's not feasible. <laughs> I didn't need to tell them that. But they respected what I do. They know now what it costs to do things, that everything can't be done, uh, that and I'm, not, I'm not the do-all, end-all. Now they're starting to respect my position and understanding my limitations through this process. This is helping me out. I'm enjoying this whole thing. So these are the projects that were done. Uh, an example is PS81 got a technology upgrade. All the schools got technology upgrades, a media center, uh, the community center, a playground renovation, increased lighting, uh, and other great things that the community thought of. And this was my first ballot. It was not easy, 17 projects. Um, and this is an expo. So the, the folks come out and they do these great little examples of what things look like. Uh, and they do this themselves because they got to sell their project. It's, a vo it's voting, it's campaigning. So you need good signs. And that's their good signs. Schools, by far, easiest advantage. They put like two little kids in front. <laughs> I think they swept the whole, the whole ballot the first year. So we, we're, we're learning too because those, those parents are too organized. And you know what the Department of Education's greatest fear is, right? Organized parents. <laughs> that's what they don't want. So this is an example of folks coming out to vote. That's the day of. Also, we can't promote this because have, I have five staff members. I can't promote it. So what do I do? I just go to everyone. I go to every senior center, every church, every park, uh, every community center. I just go to the people. I don't, I don't advertise it because my four staff members, Lacey Tauber is here. You know, we don't pay them enough to do that type of work. Um, so these are the ones that won. An environmental upgrade to the Brooklyn Arbor School, a community technology upgrade. Uh, playground renovation at Williamsburg Houses, hardwood floors at Cooper Park, and a passenger van. Those dark blues, I was able to give those at the end because that already amounted to a million right there, right? But this is great for me because I'm like, look, I got a little bit more money. Let me just throw it in. They're like, oh, they're all happy. And this is, this is amazing. I didn't choose any of these projects. The community said this is what their needs were. Their decisions, the decision was theirs, not mine. And that is very empowering to them. Uh, and then year two, we got to do it all over again. And it starts the next day. This process is so long, it starts the next day. So already they were working and we're starting this process again. So what I'm doing, and I just want to say, I got the third most votes and the number one um, most amount of votes by a freshman council member in the entire city council. My community was hungry for this. They wanted this. And once I gave them that opportunity, they absolutely took off. And and what we found is a common denominator. All parts of the district care about all the same things. We are all, all related. Housing, parks, schools, those things matter to everyone. So I don't come from a place of like divisiveness and a place where we can't work together. What is our common ground? And I found that through participatory budgeting. And hopefully we can continue to collaborate and expand on this civic engagement. So thank you guys again for this opportunity to speak. <laughs>